So recently did an install of a four camera Reolink PoE in VR and we're gonna share our experiences and things we learned and things we liked and disliked about the system. Let's check it out. So the system we installed is the 4K four camera version. The NVR comes with a two terabyte hard drive and it does support up to eight cameras. Now, luckily they do use the same NVR throughout their various packages. They just change up the cameras a little bit from doing bullets or turrets or five megapixel, four megapixel, et cetera. So you can get exactly what you want. Now they also do have a 16 channel version instead of going with the eight. And typically a lot of the packages, they will come with say four cameras and it, yet the NVR supports eight. Or if they come with eight, a lot of times the NVR, if you check, it will be the 16 channel. That way you can expand and plug in various cameras and you can mix and match things to fit your needs. So whatever camera package you choose, Basically everything's gonna be kind of the same based on since it is the same base in VR and the same pretty much features. Now one thing to note, as I said before, you can mix and match all the cameras. So you can throw in say the PTZ cameras, you can throw in even we tried one of the little E1 Pro cameras and that worked great. As well as we did try some other manufacturer cameras that were on VIF RTSP based and they work perfectly once we put the ID and password straight into the Rio Link NVR. So let's go look at the equipment and check out the install. So on the NVR itself, you do have the USB port in the front for downloading any video snips that you might need. You have the power hard drive, plus you got a few navigation buttons. Go around to the back, because party's always in the back, right? We do have the USB ports, the network connectors, the external hard drive if you need to add storage, plus the PoE ports to connect the up to eight cameras. There is a two terabyte hard drive pre-installed for you. So you do get four bundles of ethernet runs for the four cameras with ends already on them. The power supply is a 48 volt power supply, 1.8 amp and it is UL listed. For the cameras we're using in this package, these are the 4K cameras. They are the bullet style cameras. They do have night vision. For the connectors, you get your ethernet connection, which of course is your PoE to carry power. If you need to do external power, you can use the power port here. It's a pretty simple camera to point. Take the Allen wrench and unlock it, and then you can pivot the ball joint around to point it where you need. Get the HDMI cable, get your literature for your stickers and your templates for screwing the holes if you need to, as well as you do get a wiring map if you need to know where each plug goes on the back of the unit. Plus a little quick start guide if you need that as well. So you get all your ethernet boots if you need to make waterproof connections, as well as you do get some Ethernet ends to cut off and put on the cables if you're going to put those weatherproof boots on. We didn't need those in this case, but it's a nice little touch. They throw them in the box for you. Then you get all the mounting hardware, the anchors, the screws, plus the Allen wrench for each camera to tighten them down when you point them. Then, of course, you do get the mouse, but we did end up using the Amazon Basics mouse as we wanted a wireless mouse instead of this wired one. It's a pretty complete kit has everything you need. So let's go get it installed. So for the install, the installation is fairly simple. It is just plug and play. You just basically connect the ethernet cables they provide with it, plug it up to the camera and plug it into the ports into the NVR itself. There's no configuration of the cameras. It's all plug and play and automatically brings it into the NVR. It really couldn't get any simpler by just simply plugging them in. And same thing goes for connecting it to the internet. Take the ethernet cable, plug it into your router, plug it into the NVR, and then add it into the app, and it's that simple. So really the only difficult part of the installation, of course, is finding the exact spot where you wanna put the cameras. A little trick for that is I have a 200 foot cable that I plug into the NVR, 
and just walk around the various spots in the house and then check it out and see what the true coverage areas are before I do any mounting of any hardware or drilling holes or running wires, etc. And that way you can see exactly what's going to show on the camera. And after that, it's pretty much just go ahead and mount the camera and then run the wire through the attic or whatever it might be to get that wire back to the NVR. And sometimes you may not be able to run a wire straight from that camera to the MVR. Well, in that case, you may have to go with a Wi-Fi camera that will be in the MVR itself as well. So in our particular installation, we installed the MVR into a wiring closet, and then we ran an HDMI cable to the living room and connected it to the TV set. That way the user could just change the inputs on their TV in the living room and pull up all their cameras instantly. The only issue we did have was, of course, the mouse and being able to control the interface in the living room. Well, we did find through going through a several different mice that the Logitech mice would not work with it, but a simple Amazon Basics wireless mouse worked perfect. And of course, we will leave the link down in the description of the video of which mouse we used and found that worked through a couple walls and worked great for controlling the interface of the MVR. And that leads us to the MVR, the interface itself. So with the MVR, you do get the ability to pick several different types of layouts. You can get the nine camera layout, which of course only eight cameras will show in the eight camera model. If you double click a camera, it will pull up full screen on that particular camera that you are selecting. And it will show down that you do have the audio as well as the megapixels per camera. And you can cycle through and just double click and it goes back and forth from each camera. And you can scroll around and zoom into all the particular things you want to look at. And it is just a digital zoom, of course. So your higher megapixel cameras are going to look better with the digital zoom. Now this is the one of our favorite views that allowed us to see one large camera and then several small cameras. It's the 8 screen. And this is one of the 8 megapixel 4K cameras. Just to check out the zoom on this one. It is pretty crystal clear and we were all impressed with the quality and how smooth everything was with this NVR. Now you can adjust the camera settings to each camera and adjust the brightness, the contrast, etc. based on what the image you're looking at. And it's pretty simple to do through the interface. Now if you do want to go search for various playback of recordings from motion, pretty simple to do, go search. We put in our date and time and then we'll hit the search button and find the video clip we'd like. And down at the bottom, it shows you when it was normal recording or as an event and you just drag the slider over and you can view all the video clips you like. Pretty typical for an MVR and how you view things. There's a lot more to the interface itself, but I will say for the initial setup, I did prefer to go through and change things using the actual PC program that allows you to do all this with a full keyboard, etc. And it makes it a little easier sitting down at the desk to do the configuration. So the real link app on the computer itself is very cool. I do prefer to use that method as I mentioned. It does give you a little more flexibility of doing things and it's just a little easier instead of trying to sit up in front of the TV or whatever it might be. So it is pretty much the same thing. You can just double click just like you would on the interface and get the full image. And one of the cool things is you can use this app remotely over the internet as we're doing with this during the recording of this video. So set up some of your settings in here. It's pretty simple. You go through, you can pick all the different channels. You can name all the different cameras. It's a little easier to do in here because you get the full keyboard and you can change all the different settings and it's a little bit easier to do we found in the app itself. As well as it's a little easier to do when you're doing the motion setup on a camera. And this one is selected on all of them. If you didn't want this particular area, same type deal. You can turn off the squares and that way it won't worry about detecting motion in these areas. Now, one thing I did find about the playback, which was kind of weird at first, I was trying to see the cameras. But if you look and you click this icon right here, it will pop down the cameras so you can see and drag all the different cameras out here and you can see exactly when you had motion on all the various cameras. 
So pretty cool feature. It's a little bit easier to do in the app itself, just like many other things. And you can see down here all the little lines based on when there was motion. The playback's pretty simple, straightforward, no problems. One thing to pay attention to when you're viewing things on the app is whether you have it in fluent or clear. It will based on your bandwidth settings. If you're doing it remote or locally, you can do fluent and that's going to be a little bit less on the picture quality, but it will make sure and have a higher frame rate. Now we did select clear for this and you can see we do get a really clear picture from this camera itself while it's raining. I highly recommend using the Real Link app. It just makes things a little easier. But hey, that interface from the MVR itself is just second to none when you're just trying to view it from far away, say in a living room. So for the most part, it, we pretty much liked just about everything with this MVR system. The one thing I do want to speak about is if you do decide to go with, say, the 4 megapixel cameras or the 8 megapixel cameras, keep in mind those cameras at this time do not support RTSP. So at a later point, if you decide to break the cameras off from the MVR and just use them by themselves, you won't be able to use them at all with, say, RTSP or whatever. They are designed just to be used with the real link MVRs unfortunately. So if you're thinking about that, stick with the 5 megapixels. It gives you a flexibility of later say to go to Blue Iris or say whatever type of system you'd like to go with. But for the ease of use, reliability, and simplicity, these real link MVRs are just second to none. Just plug them in and go. Now I know we always talk about local control and absolutely this MVR system, you can access it using RTSP as well as you can do snapshots to pull in JPEGs to various other types of automation such as Home Assistant or Node Red or whatever it might be. And everything is documented straight on the Real Link support site. Nothing hidden and nothing you really got to dig for. And there's even a web GUI that you can view some of the things on the system, but you really can't go in and go configure everything like you can. So I really recommend using the Real Link app that allows you to configure all the settings for each camera, as well as say do firmware upgrades and whatever it might be, even firmware upgrades of the cameras itself through the MBR. So one thing I did find an issue with, I couldn't get the high quality RTSP stream to work from the MBR. We were able to use the one called sub, which is the lower quality. And maybe that's due to some of the limitations of the processor in the MBR itself, not being able to process all that video as well as do the decoding down to for, for RTSP. But it does work with the lower ones and it works great, say in Home Assistant or whatever it might be you want to use it with. Now, selecting a system, think about how many cameras you want and give yourself a little expandability because, of course, if you do hit eight cameras with this, that's all it's going to support if you chose just the eight channel MVR. So maybe you want to check out the 16 channel MVR and then say use it with five or six cameras at first. That way it gives you expandability to say to go to 12 in the future and add a few other cameras, say even after that. Now one, I wouldn't say it's a negative thing, it's one thing that would save a lot of time and frustration is just Real Link should offer a wireless mouse as an option with some of these systems instead of like we did, we tried about three or four different brands and models until we found one that works. Now of course we will leave that link down in the video description below to save you some frustration of like we did having to dig through different models. So that about wraps it up. Pretty good system. If you want something simple, plug and play and just works and you don't want to have to deal with, say, doing a computer or a VM or whatever it is with a software NVR, definitely pick one of these up and check it out. So I appreciate all the Patreon subscribers out there. It definitely helps bring projects and new products to the channel each week. If you're not a subscriber, hit that subscribe button down below, hit that bell icon, check out our next live stream and video, and y'all take care. Yeah, because I talk, I talk a whole lot. I end up cutting a lot of shit out. So. Why are you getting frustrated? Because you keep saying the thing over and over again. <laughs> what do I say? All the things you just said to me already.